Welcome to another video. Today we want to have a look at the plosive sounds in English. There are six plosives in English. First we have p and b, they form a pair. Then t and d and the last pair are k and g. The three plosives on the left are all unvoiced or voiceless. That means we do not use our vocal cords. P, t and k are all unvoiced. There's no vibration from your vocal cords here. There is b, d and g, much louder. You can hear that already, are voiced um, plosives, voiced consonants. So when you put your hand here on your throat, b, d, g, you can feel clear vibration from your vocal cords in your throat. But they go in pairs. So p and b form a pair because of the way they're formed. And we will talk about this more in a moment. How are plosives formed? For that, we need to have a look at our vocal tract. I've labeled this diagram here for you so you can see where the lips, the tongue and the vocal cords are in your vocal tract. Now, plosives are formed by completely blocking the airflow in the vocal tract and then releasing it suddenly. So that means there's a little explosion of air when you suddenly release the air. And that is why I put a little boom sign here. That is also why these sounds are called plosives. And in fact, in the word plosives, you have a p and p is a plosive. And you can hear this little explosion very clearly. P. So there's closure somewhere in the vocal tract and it could be at different places within the vocal tract. And we'll have a look in a moment. Um, and that is really why they are plosives. So there is a closure, maybe from lip to lip or somewhere behind your teeth. The air builds up and then jim, you release it suddenly. And that sudden release is really what forms the sound. Now, so remember, we have six plosives in total and they are different because three of them are voiced. The other three are unvoiced but they are also formed in different places and that gives them a specific quality. So they obviously do not all sound the same. They are six different sounds. And let's have a look at that in more detail next. First up, we have P and B. So P and B are what we called bilabial sounds. And bilabial really means that they are formed with both lips closed. P, B. And you can see this very clearly when I say them. You can also look in the mirror when you say them yourselves. So we close our lips and this is where the closure is. And then we suddenly release them and open them. P, B. And this is uh, what forms the sound. So here the sound is formed right at the front of the mouth with both our lips closed and that's why they're called bilabial. Bi, two and labial lips with the two lips closed. Next up we have t and d and these are called alveolar. Now that is a bit of a funny word, maybe you have never heard it before. Now that really means that the tip of our tongue. Our tongue is very long. We have the tip and the blade and the middle part and the end. But here the tip of the tongue is involved in forming the sound. So the tip of the tongue forms a closure just behind your teeth and behind your top teeth. Now when you feel with your tongue in your mouth behind the top teeth, there is a little just here, there's a little ridge behind the top teeth. And that ridge or that bump is called the alveolar ridge. And your tongue, the tip of your tongue forms a closure when we say t and d. 
Just say it and be aware where your tongue is. T and D. So there is a closure and again then the tongue is opened, it just goes down and opens up that closure and this is what forms the sound T and D. And the movement is exactly the same for both of those, just as we had with P and B. The movement of the articulators is the same. The difference between T and D is T is unvoiced, D is voiced. So that is why they are still two different sounds, two different phonemes. Now, let's have a look at our next pair, K and G. Now, K and G are formed right at the back of our vocal tract, and we call these velar sounds. Now, that is because G and K, if you say them and just pay a little bit of attention where your tongue is and what movement you have, K, G, so the back of the tongue is involved in forming the sound, not the tip, not the sides, it's the back. The tongue moves to the back and forms a closure at the back of your throat and the back of your throat is also called the velum and that is why they are called velar sounds. So we have and g, a closure right here at the back of your throat and then you suddenly release it and we can hear the sound. And you can see I've put an error here to the part where the velum is. K, unvoiced and g, voiced. Now there's something interesting that you might have noticed with these six plosives in that we move through the mouth. For example, B formed right here at the front of the mouth with both our lips closed. T, D, a little bit behind the teeth, the top teeth, the tongue touches that little bump. And then K and G right at the end um, of the vocal tract here where the velum is. So really we move through the mouth and that is also why they are placed in that order on most phonemic charts. There's another thing that is important to remember about unvoiced plosives. So remember we have p, t and k. Those are unvoiced plosives and often they are aspirated. Now this is another new word probably. Aspirated means that there's a little h sound, a little puff of air that follows these sounds. And for that I will just show you a little um, a little piece of paper and just watch what happens to my paper when I say these three aspirated plosives. P. It's very obvious the paper moves because you can actually see that little puff of air. P. T. K. It's the most obvious with P but you can also see it with T and K. But remember the voiced plosives B, D, G, there is no puff of air, they're not aspirated. So often aspirated and that means really there's like a little h attached to these, um, to these sounds and I've given you two words here as an example, stop. So here we actually have t and p in one word, stop and also that. So the end sound here, that. I, I can also feel the air, um, this little puff of air here at my bottom lip. If you say it a couple of times, I'm sure you can feel it too. That. Now I want us to have a look at the spellings of these plosive sounds. The good news is, for most of them, it is really easy. So for P, we either have the spelling P or double P, for example, in the word people, stop, or apple, very easy. For B, we have B or double B, boy, job, rabbit, all of those have a B sound. For T, we either have T, double T, or ED endings. Remember ED endings in regular verbs 
and also in adjectives. Some adjectives in English have an ed ending. Here we often have a t. For example, tell, better, talked. The ed in talked is a t sound. And the same is true for d. We can have d, double d, or also ed endings for regular verbs or adjectives. For example, did, middle, played. If you were new to the ed endings or you've never heard that before, that this is really t or d very often, make sure to watch my other video where I explain all about ed endings. What about the typical spelling for g and k? Here we have more patterns. Let's have a look at g first. G can either be spelled as G, double G, or X, and that might be new. <laughs> Let's have a look at some examples for G or double G. We have, for example, good, dog, begin, bigger, all pretty easy. But like I said, also, um, sometimes we have words spelled with X and there is a G, Z sound in here for the X. For example, exam, example, exhausted. So here it's G, Z, both of them voiced. G, Z, together, G, Z, they represent the letter X. Exam, example, exhausted. Very good. Now let's have a look at the last sound, k. Here we have the most spelling patterns. It could be spelled with a k, a c, a ck, ch, q, u, or x. Very often it's a k or a c or ck, but the other spellings can happen as well. Let's have a look at some example words. So for k we have king, can then we have the word check so here the ck is at the end check and then we also have the word character so here c ch is a k sound however that only really happens in words that were originally taken from greek so that is not really happening in in pure english words as you as you want so for example character chronological those are words that were originally from another language. We took them and here the CK is a K sound. Then we also have queen. So QU is a K W sound. Queen, question. Many words have QU and it's a K W sound. And then we have a couple of words also with X and the X here forms a K S, -x sound. So it's really two sounds that represent X and both of them are unvoiced this time so k -s -k -s, absolutely unvoiced for example in the word excited or another word luxury so you can just say them and always check with the hand if you're not quite sure is it voiced is it unvoiced you can always do the check now we need to be a little bit careful with minimal pairs with these sounds. A lot of these sounds have minimal pairs and if you don't remember what minimal pairs are or you've never heard of them before, remember I have a whole video dedicated to minimal pairs. I will link to it in the description box below. Minimal pairs are a pair of word, words in English and they sound exactly the same. They only differ in one sound in the same position. And so they have very different meanings. And that can be very tricky because they sound almost identical apart from that one sound, but the meaning is very different. Let's have a look at some examples for P and B first. We have pull and bull, pin and bin, pair and bear. Now if you come from a first language where you do not have for example the sound p as in Arabic, make sure you practice the difference 
and they have a have an extra look at the minimal pairs you get them right and they sound different when you say them here are other minimal pairs this time's for the pairs of sounds t and d we have tie die try and dry train and drain and last but not least some minimal pairs for k and g we have cold gold coast ghost crease grease very good